I've never made a bolster before out of brass or anything like that. Uh, so this is the first time I cut a hole in the brass and uh, now I'm fitting it for the blade. I'm gonna try to kind of outline it so that at least it has a even reveal all the way around. And then I'll take the brass part and I'll polish it. And then we're gonna two part epoxy it inside um, just to fill up any holes and gaps and stuff like that, make it uniform. All right, uh, if you love sanding, come on over to my house because I've been sanding this probably for an hour with 80 grit and it's like barely touching it. You can still see little things in the metal and, and stuff like that. And I mean, it's slowly, slowly, slowly coming out, but man, does it take forever. Um, and I'm, I'm just gonna get this nice so that it's got a good finish on it. And then I'm gonna try to polish it. I got, I got a brand new um, polish wheel right here. So I took the shroud off and stuff so it's not catching, but this seems to be doing pretty good. I had to balance this because it was like blah, 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 blah. so um, I just used little PVC shims on either side and then now it runs pretty smooth. So anyway back to sanding. Alright so I got the uh, got the blade mounted and uh, got the brass fitted got a smashed piece of leather in there to give me the, the spacer between the wood and the brass. And then uh, this is gluing uh, up, uh, kind of laminating. And then I've got one piece of the brass uh, in there. It was a little too big, so I used some sandpaper and a drill and uh, kind of whittled it down a little bit. And then it fit really, really, really snug. So that's not going anywhere. And then I peened it on this with a, with a hammer and uh, flattened out the ends. So uh, it should be really good. should be very, 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 very solid. And then I'll continue on with uh, the rest of the brass stock throughout this thing once I get it all shaped. And then I'm thinking kind of like almost like an hourglass and maybe finger grooves or something like that in the handle and then maybe I'll stain it up we'll see so now that it's uh, cured and uh, I've got it glued together I'm gonna start shaping the handle with uh, my grinder I'm ready to put the, the back side of it on and kind of shaped it a little bit um, now I need the counterweight which is this guy right here and basically I used uh, just a really sharp piece of metal and a ruler and then I marked off center and then two centimeters wide and one centimeter um, tall and uh, I did the same thing here and then zip this out in the bandsaw and then kind of carved it uh, flat with uh, you know like carving tools which man I'll tell you what those things are so handy you, you uh, don't have a set get your set and then uh, make sure you're always cutting away from you uh, they're just so 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 handy so then what I took did was take a thin piece of leather and put it in here for a good spacer and then I put uh, wood glue down so that it would adhere to the wood and then this will be the spacer between um, the brass and the wood uh, and then I'll trim it up later on. So now this brass piece goes on the top and it will be really, really tight. And then um, I may or may not put this uh, brass end on it. It depends on how well I can get it to adhere. Um, but really this, this is like putting a hatchet end on. Um, you kind of want to spread it out so that it, it can't go anywhere. Um, and you want to do it delicately so you don't split the whole thing so yeah all right i'm going to try this uh camera setup i don't know if it's going to work or not but i'm going to give it a shot um, 
basically what I'm doing is I'm uh, polishing uh, in compound this handle and uh, trying to get some of this compound inside the wood. Uh, it'll make for a really nice finish. Okay, so this is where we're at now. Um, I got some of the compound in it, so it gives this nice, worn, like, ancient look to it. And now, uh, and then I sanded it again. I got all the brass pieces in it and smashed down. And uh, it's, you know, it's too bad I didn't think of this before, but if I had a little bit of rabbit fur, this would have been a really cool accent to have some rabbit fur in here. I'm going to trim this up and make it look nice. Um, but the next step is some tongue oil on the handle. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. This first coat is basically just to oil in and uh, let it soak up. Um, I noticed there's a couple cracks in the handle um, because it was so dry. Uh, so hopefully this will help that. Um, if it gets too bad, what I'll do is I'll epoxy the outside. But uh, I do like the look of tongue oil on this particular wood. It uh, turned out nice. So, there you go. Put a couple more coats on after it dries, and then uh, I'm going to attempt to etch it. So I'm just uh, gluing a couple pieces of leather together and then I'm going to stitch it. And what I like to do is use a drill press and uh, first I'll mark out where the holes go uh, on the edge and after I clean up the edges. Um, I usually clean them up with a belt sander um, and make it look nice and uniform. And then uh, we'll mark my edges across so they're nice and even, and then that gives me a place to uh, mark where I'm going to drill uh, the stitch holes. And I've got uh, a leather wheel. Basically, what the leather wheel does is mark off stitch points. So you just roll it inside the, the groove, and it marks out like how many dots I have. Um, but like another. my other uh, leather pieces here. Um, I stitched this all together with just leather cord, which works really well, it looks really good. Um, it's super quick to make. So, um, yep. So, we're gonna do something similar to that. Uh, I'm not sure what, but uh, yeah, we'll figure it out as it comes. Alright, so uh, I don't know if this is going to work, but I've uh, got a piece of duct tape on the blade and uh, I have to cut out exactly on the blade. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a template on a sheet of paper. Um, I marked a zero point and I'm basically going to vector cut up this all the way out. See, um, uh, 
in the back room. I'll try to. The Niger's a little too big to be fit in here, so it's worth it. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pick out the parts that I want exposed and uh, we'll just use a dental pick and pick these out nice and gentle but that takes two hands so. Alright so uh, it's the first time I've ever tried an acid edge. Um, basically this is just an electrolyte uh, etching and uh, this is a solution of uh, salt and white vinegar. So it's basically using electrolytes to uh, etch into the metal. And I don't know how well this is gonna work. I might end up uh, goofing up the blade, uh, but even if it looks semi uh, good resolution, it's still gonna be pretty decent uh, for my first go around. Biggest thing I've got to worry about is not etching the brass. I'm trying to stay away from the brass when I when I go to do it. So um, I have the positive lead on the metal, and the negative lead I'm soaking in the electrolyte solution, and I've got the uh, battery charger which I think everybody's got a battery charger uh, is sitting on um, 2 amp so So it looks like I'm getting some color. I just switched up to 50 amp. Um, maybe having a hard time getting through all this cloth. Again, one of my things is I have to be really careful about um, getting near the brass. Alright, so uh, now that I've hit it with uh, the electrode, you can see that it's uh, blackened the blade and uh, slightly etched it, which is really all I'm going for. Uh, now I hear that people, some people like just hold it on there and then uh, get a pretty decent deep etch, but that's not really what I'm going for here. I, I kind of want uh, the delicate look. So, um, we'll see, and uh, next thing is to let this dry for a couple minutes and then um, pull, the, pull the duct tape off and see if it worked. Alright, so uh, we've just etched, etched this in, so let's uh, take off the duct tape and see if it uh, actually did what, what it's supposed to do. I think this is my first time ever doing this stuff, so... I don't really know what I'm doing, but uh, let's just take a look. It 
looks like it, doesn't it? Well, there you go, acid etched. The tree of life, and then the other side is going to be the negative image, which will be the tree of knowledge. And uh, turned out pretty cool. So, all right, I got the uh, stitching in the scabbard, and I'm starting to put in uh, the button snap. This is just reach her over and snap to this guy and that'll keep the dagger in place all right so got the scabbard put together um, and i'll put a snap on it so basically uh we're just gonna see and make sure that it fits well um, so that fits all the way against there um, that's the blades all the way down Make sure that it's good in there. Let's see. And then the snap comes up and snaps just like that. Now the blade can't come out. So, what we'll do now is we'll put some belt loop uh, slots in here and uh, should be good to, uh, to start wearing. The other thing, too, is I'll need to put a lace or something down here um, because if it's just attached to your belt and you try to pull this out uh, this will flop around and then you won't be getting a clean pull when you try to get it out of the scabbard gotta put the thigh lace on it and uh, then we're gonna do some design and then I'll um, put some leather stain on it and uh, probably put some uh, beeswax or something like that to finish it or maybe I'll just oil it with saddle soap and it'll be good to go all right here we go we're gonna attempt to burn the pattern into my sheath here we're going to sit to raster and grave at 450 inches a minute. And I've got a line go right there. And we're going to go ahead and raster and grave it. We got um, laser work done on this, and then uh, I did some tooling on it. And this was a, a drawing that I drew, I think, in 2014. Um, and I just transferred it to the computer and then uh, put it up on the sheath. So uh, basically, it's just a dabber, and I'm using a, a color called Bison. And uh, just tab it on here, and it soaks up. kind of going a little rough at first, but the second layer kind of smooths it all out. And then I really want to get inside the tooling. Um, and it'll look nice and rich. Sorry, it's hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time. But. Let it dry, and then I'll 
be ready to wear. Just like that. Cool, eh? So the last step is just to put the neat foots compound on it. It's um it's an oil and it just protects the leather. Um, it brings out like a real rich color. And then uh, there you go. Got our dagger in here with uh, with a sheath. And we'll let this guy dry. Remember to like, subscribe.